Come some of the stars of that wonderful show, Captain Patrick O'Donnell and Man of the Match, Shane O'Donnell, and manager, Davy Fitzgerald, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, fellas. What a week that was, I have to say. I mean, look at this. this. This this wonderful piece of silver here before us. Davy Fitzgerald, what does, what does that mean to you, this time? Well, I suppose I didn't appreciate it enough the first time. Did you not? No, I, like, it was fantastic, but when you're playing, I suppose you get caught up in bits and pieces, but since we've won it this time, I've kept it fairly close to my chest, to tell you the truth. It's been yeah. every place I've gone last night, I've gone, you know? Yeah. Even backstage, you wouldn't let it go, would you? No, there was no letting it go. The two little cock kids were trying their hardest to pull it off me there. And <laughs> we still weren't letting it go, you know? Yeah, but I wouldn't um, mind, but they were the Ben Half Half children uh, who were saying, up court, and you ran in and you said, up oh, there, lads! <laughs> <laughs> ah, the, it was great, but I, I suppose, Ryan, the emotion with people in Clare, yeah. that's what has got to me more than that. And, um, in what way? Young and old, like, you see the reaction it's had on people down there, and, I suppose there's enough of doom and gloom in the country at the moment, but yeah. I, there isn't a clear at the moment, no. that's for sure, yeah. Party's still going on, is it? it? It's going on, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What about you, I mean, Pat, Pat, look at it. This was the accumulation of a lot of hard work, a lot of dark winter nights and training and matches and winning and losing and drawing, whatever else you got there eventually. Yeah, it's, it's brilliant. It's still, I suppose it still seems a bit surreal when you're looking back at those clips. Uh, the boyhood dream when I was growing up to, to go up to Hogan's Stand and, uh, and lift the cup, and uh, it's just, it's been... Uh, one of our dreams for the last couple of couple of days and yeah. just between the homecoming and, and the reception we're getting from the Clare supporters and, and the public in general has just been absolutely brilliant. Shane, you've had a very low key week. <laughs> <laughs> I mean honest yeah, to goodness. Going on, right? What what happened? Obviously you had that extraordinary result yourself at the at the at the game, but uh, we'll talk about all of that in a moment. What about the the the, the trophy itself, the cup itself, what what do you think? It's just unbelievable. Like, it's what you dream of when you pick up early when you're five and six to finally get your hands on a trophy like that. And yeah. She's not in your wildest dreams, play a game like last Saturday and have people like handing you ball left and centre to put in the net. Like, but it's absolutely amazing. Like. The, 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 the coverage of it has been remarkable because everyone seems to have be been particularly pleased with the win. And it's travelled across the way to the, the Guardian newspaper. I don't know if you heard about that, did you? Uh, that the Guardian paper wrote, uh, hopefully the Gaelic Athletic Association will do all sports fans everywhere a massive favour and produce DVD copies of this memorable game where Clare emerged victorious and went on to say when you compare the quality and the dignity of that game to some of the Premiership football matches that you see and the prima donna activity that goes on there. I mean, it, there, it, it, this has given our... And Eve almost just think it's fair to say a great name. Well, I'm just astounded myself at the lads. Um, like Ryan, since probably last December, yeah. these guys have probably been out the bones of three times only to when we won the All Ireland. The way they mind themselves, um, their dedication, like they're, they're missing out on a lot socially. I suppose their partners and things like that. Well, Shane, I don't know if you have a partner or not, but. Um, <laughs> you see, Davey. You know exactly what the answer to that question is. <laughs> and now you're, and, and you're acting the maggot. Okay, okay, okay. Well, we'll get to that we'll, in a yeah, minute. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave him alone for a while. So we'll, <laughs> for how long? Uh, we'll give him another minute or two okay. we'll go out, you know? <laughs> But it's, I don't think people probably realise that the Gaelic players in Ireland, the, the amount of hours they put in is incredible. And my hats are just off to the lads. Like, I, I know sometimes we get a bit of the credit, but trust me, yeah. it's what they do counts and the way they handle themselves. Like the biggest thing I love about this team is the way they're perceived, the way they go to the young kids. Like yeah. these, guys, these guys are just drawn to the young kids and I think they're great ambassadors. Great, setting a wonderful example. Uh, let's go back to the celebrations immediately after the game last Saturday night because we have uh, footage from the dressing room where obviously the emotion and the excitement and the euphoria was kicking in good uh, let's, re let's remind ourselves of that. That was the winning uh, group from Claire's Got Talent last week. Which, uh, 
It's the independent sports reporter, Marty Marcy, getting a look in there. With, uh, <laughs> right in there, proud Claire, man. That looked like a lot of fun. You probably missed the best part. Another bit of footage you haven't seen. What is it? Uh, it's Mart. They were singing, um, there's only one Marty Marcy inside, which is absolutely <laughs> unreal. So it was, but he's one of our own, and we're proud of him. Yeah, yeah I can imagine. Did, Shane, what time of the day did you hear that you were going to be lining out? It was about 10 to 3, maybe. That roughly. Late. Yeah, we were about a couple of hours before the game. I just got pulled aside before we were getting food. Yeah. And David was just saying, I got the nod ahead of Derek, and well, it all started to kick ahead then. And it's just dressed like kind of fell into place from there. I didn't even have time to be nervous, really. I just kind of was so close, I was just excited. And was that the strategy, David? Like, don't give him time to fret and overthink it? Well, he's 19 years of age, like we decided. Um, let's keep as much pressure off him as possible. He was absolutely flying at training, and um, probably a few of the boys at training had an idea he was going so well he was going to be playing, but I got him on my own during the week, and I said, listen, you'll, start, you, you'll come on at some stage, you'll play some part of it, but you won't start. Because I just wanted to make it clear, and he said he wouldn't be starting to take any bit of nerves or anything that was there or off him, you know. But in saying that, I probably could have told him, because he's such, he's such a good guy, he's able to deal with pressure, no problem. And had you a chat about goals and promises of goals? Did you make a political promise to each other, or what happened there in that chat? <laughs> I don't think there was need of a promise. I can't score points, like, so I just kind of... I kind of just go for goals, like, um, Davey knows that, the rest of the lads know that, like, and it was just kind of... I suppose well, that was why I was in the Well, team. I asked him, listen, I said straight out, I said, yeah. listen, I need you to bag one or two ones. And he said, if you give me enough time, I will. So he did it. Fair play to him. You should go into politics and come good in some of the promises. <laughs> so, great, I'll take so you've been in the papers all week, of course, because of the, you've been mobbed by girls and women all over the country. And uh, they're calling you the Justin Bieber of hurling in one headline. Um, <laughs> And that's probably a hair thing as much as anything else. Uh, then, of course, you played the match for gold, the charity, uh, during the week, and I don't think you could leave the pitch. Neither could you, Dave. You believe you were signing autographs for two hours after that different match. Different reasons, I said. For different <laughs> reasons. <laughs> <laughs> and we saw that wonderful picture in the cover of the examiner there as well. And, of course, uh, one of your teammates tweeted a photograph, which we can see, uh, which said, uh, first man to get a guard or escort out of a GAA dressing room, which is, of course, uh, fair enough, too. So what's that like to be in the middle of all of that adulation? Yeah, well, it's, it's flattering, I guess, and borderline embarrassing at some stages, but, um, well, I suppose in, when you think about it, like, when you look back at it in a couple of months or a year or two, it's not the not being able to get off the bridge on the Wednesday night that you're going to remember. It's going to be winning Liam McCarthy with your best friends on the Saturday, like, and yeah. it's not, um, it's only a sideshow kind of thing after. You don't really think about it too much, like, and... Yeah. It really hasn't all sunk in yet, so it's, it's kind some of some side shot. I mean, you can't go to the shop, you, you can't walk out and go to a match. Yeah, but it, it really, it's really just like I'm going around in a dream at this stage. Like, it? It's just, I, it really has not kicked in your, yet Your mum's here tonight, Mary, I think. Is, where's, where's mum? Give us the... How you doing? Now, you, you, you were asked a question during the week, which was uh, about, obviously, Shane, and, and the question was, is he single? To which you should have said, no comment, and you said... I was a naive, innocent at that stage. I think that must have been Monday. And By Wednesday, said, I would have said a different thing. So what did you I say? I said, no, he wasn't single. You said he was very much single, wasn't he? <laughs> oh, sorry, did I say? Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. yeah, I said he was single. You're yeah. trying to get him out of a corner now, but it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> so what do, you, what, do you, what do you make of Justin Bieber over here? How, how are you coping with all that? Well, he's always looked like that, so that's just Shane as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Yeah. Has he always got uh, 400 girls around him looking for his autograph? Uh, that's sort of a new development, all right. But yeah. OK, and then you'll, you'll have to keep his feet on the ground. You're going to help him do that, and take it? Yeah, well, I mean, I suppose everybody's sending kids off into the world. You're hoping they'll do the right thing and make the right choices, and I have loads of faith in Shane to do the great. right thing. You've had a great week, I suspect, yeah, we've along had, with everyone yeah, else. Great. Thanks, thanks for coming great in to see Great wishes from everybody. Thanks, Ryan. Great, great. Thank you so much. Um, after you lost the Munster semi-final to Cork, you, Davy, had a summit in your living room. Why there? Well, that was a, that was a tough one to take. Um, like, we've got a lot of stick, probably in our own county, and we needed to have a chat, we needed to put it to bed, and normally you'd go to a hotel room or you'd meet in Cusick Park in Ennis and have a chat, and I was thinking about it all day, and I actually have so much time for this bunch, it's incredible, yeah. like, and, like, they have been fantastic to me as well, they've trusted me, because we, we played a type of a game in Clare that, that didn't go down well, and the public were getting on our backs a good bit, but they always, no matter what, would have stood by me, and... In my own mind, I just wanted to show them how much time and faith I had in them. And I invited them down to my own house. Like, the neighbours were probably looking and seeing 25, 30 cars the day after Cork beating us. And I don't know what they were thinking, but yeah. 
I just, I just wanted to bring the lads in, have a chat, and we, we had a great chat for maybe two and a half, three hours yeah. there, you know. You cracked open the Maiwadi, I believe. I, yeah, the Maiwadi got cracked open, yeah. Jeez, they're getting some exposure. Aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think yeah. you mentioned Figaro's, so you might as well give them all a mention yeah, tonight. Yeah, we did the Figaro's, <laughs> the Jaffa Cakes, the Rod, you know. <laughs> And what was, what was the impact of that, Pat? I mean, that's a very personal thing to do, to head to the, to the main man's uh, living room with his, where his family are all living and eating and everything else, and, and this was heartland stuff for you guys. Yeah, look, like he said, it's, when you go to a hotel room or when you go to a, a, you know, some place that mightn't be a house, it's, it can be kind of a false atmosphere, but when you go to, to somebody's home, you know that you kind of feel settled straight away, and I suppose we were just as honest as we could have been that day. Yeah. Um, Nothing was changed too dramatically, but people were just kind of airing their views and trying to see if there was any little bit we could change or, or something we kind of get out of ourselves to, yeah. to do something better. Because there was there's a huge amount of hard work to be put in previous to that, and we were just we were hugely disappointed with our performance, and mm -hmm. we just wanted to make sure that there was nothing else that we could do, or likewise from the management that they could do that would just kind of get things going again. Mm -hmm. and, and I think personally, I think from speaking to the rest of the lads, we kind of came away from the house that day with a kind of a new optimism and you know it was only a couple of days after the Cork game we were so low so we, we were after kind of picking ourselves up so sure. look it was it was great. Your respect for Davey is, is was very apparent in the speech we're going to have a little reminder of of uh, last Saturday evening have a look at this. And we have a manager in charge Davey Fitz and to say that he's obsessive about Claire Hurlan and obsessive about winning would be an understatement. He's a man I suppose that has a certain persona in the media and in papers and things like that but I can tell you if any one of these players had to put their life on their line for Davy, it'd be done in the morning, not a problem. He gives everything he has for this county, and we thank him for giving everything that he has. Thank you, Davy. Thank you, Paul. Is that... <clears throat> Is that... Was that uh, lovely for you to hear? Was it difficult for you to hear like that in other circumstances? Um, yeah, it's, we don't want to turn into big softy in this, so we don't put, um... You a softy. Yeah, 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 but listen, it, it works both ways. Um, yeah. We have respect for each other, and we have a massive panel, massive backroom team, and we respect each other. And, How do you yeah. feel about, you know, a certain persona and press and so on? How do you feel about the detractors and people who, who give out about you, Davy, and, and, and moan and whinge and say, wrong team, wrong game, wrong this, wrong that? So what's your point at that? Yeah, good. <laughs> listen, um... People are always entitled to their opinions, and that's not, listen, it's great now at the moment, but we lose a game or two next year, trust me, that'll be back just the same <laughs> as ever. So and there'll be a lot of stuff coming, but, you know, I look at, I try and look for the good in people. Good. I try and look at and say, okay, there might be people like that, but there's people who trust in you and believe in you, and you always try and look for the positive. I think yeah. that's the most important thing. It's extra extraordinary that less than a week after the big win, you <clears> guys, are, you're playing tomorrow, you're talking out tomorrow? Yeah, we both actually are playing the same field just after each other, so it's... Um, so what time are you on? Starts again. I'm on at 3 o'clock and Shane's on after then. Five okay, so it's kind of back to business as usual, really, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. And I suppose the fact that we've done so well with, with Clare between the 21s and the seniors means that our, our club championship is probably behind a few games, so we'll, yeah. we'll have to kind of get our, get our head down again and, okay. and hopefully we can go far in that. And I presume the crash barriers are up for the pitch then as soon <laughs> as uh, you come on, Shane. If I get through the match alive, uh, <laughs> I'm a marked man, it's um, I, a small person. Actually, that's probably true as well. There'll be about more out for you now. And what about 2014, Davey? Is that, does that feel like a planet away or are you thinking already? No, not. I, I'm going to enjoy this. Are you? Sam, for the next few weeks, they were talking about the draw last night. I didn't even want to see it <laughs> or hear it. We only won the All-Ireland a few days ago, so... Yeah. Um, we have respect, like people are talking to clearer win the next few, that's, that's a load of rubbish as far as I'm concerned. We'll go out and I, as I've said in clear, we will give 110% for our county and Good. that's all we can do. And if that brings more success, we'll look great. But we will be giving it every time we well, you did it. You did it last Saturday with some skill and you gave a lot of joy to a lot of people in this country. Congratulations to you and the team and everyone involved. Ladies and gentlemen, our Clare champions. <laughs> Thanks for